On the show today, some of the smartest men I know get together to break down the upcoming Liberty football season. It's a roundtable conversation at a square table. Plus, the Flames' new field hockey coach stops by, and we introduce you to one Liberty alum who's keeping the Yankees' prospects on the field. It's game on, and it's coming at you next. What is up? Welcome to Game On, your home for stories of sports and faith and all things Liberty University Athletics. As always, he's Rhett McKibben. I'm Matt Warner, and Bobby Bolig will be joining us in just a bit. Yeah, there's a certain buzz on campus these days with a fall sports season quickly approaching. We'll talk a lot about that today, starting with Flames football. Yeah, that's right. Liberty in the midst of their second week of fall camp and trying to shore up one area of concern from a season ago, that being the offensive line. That line surrendered 30 sacks last year, but they get back a healthy Michael Hinderman, which will be big. He took a medical red shirt a year ago, and they also get a new offensive line coach. Aaron Stam enters his sixth overall season on the staff, but is first in charge of the O-line. He hopes to use the next few weeks to build some chemistry and also create some much-needed depth. I think we have a pretty good relationship as an offensive line. We're always doing things together. We're out on the field grinding together, but I think um, our coaching and Coach Stam's doing a really good job getting us close together. I challenge our guys that I want 10 guys that when we go into a football game, all 10 of you can go in and play. And if we can do that, and it's, I'll be honest with you, in my 18 years, I don't know if I've ever been a part of a team that's had 10 guys that you feel totally comfortable with. So that's my challenge to them is how good can you get every day that the whole staff and the whole team, it feels good. Hey, if the second guy's in, we're good. And you know, that's my challenge to them. Well, as training camp continues, we get to participate in every broadcaster's favorite thing, water cooler talk. This week we hear from our very own Matt Warner, the voice of the Flames, Alan York, and former New Hampshire Wildcat Paul Rotigliano in the first of a three-part season preview beginning with the Flames offense. Uh, guys, let's start talking about the offense this week. Second year with Joe Daly as the offensive coordinator. Paul, you've been on the sidelines, you've been in coaching, you understand this very well, but year two for a coordinator, what are the differences the second time around? And, and can an offense take a jump in that second year being more familiar with it? The biggest thing that comes to mind is familiarity yeah. with your group, with your staff, and knowing that comfort zone. And now I've talked about this on the radio, but. He's got to see progression from Stephen Calvert uh, this second year. He played 10 games last year. Obviously, he didn't get the start against Virginia Tech. He struggled. He went through a dip last year, kind of tailed off at the end of the year. But that's my biggest thing right there is his relationship with the quarterback, how well those two are integrated. Joe's been one that he's been a big fan of Buckshot oh, yeah. even since Day he one. started recruiting him, <laughs> and we've heard a lot about him. And I think that's a special bond that you that the OC and the quarterback do have with each other. And let's not be shy about it. He's got some pretty good players coming back. But having Buckshot back for year two, we've already talked about how bigger he's gotten and how much more of a command of the offense he's got. So big things, I think, on the horizon for this Liberty offense. You talk about the offensive line. Can we all agree that's kind of the biggest area, I don't know if you want to call it area for concern, but certainly an area where there's some question marks there. Is that the biggest spot on the offensive side of the ball where we kind of wait and see what happens? Yeah, well, it's the biggest. It's got the largest group, and those five guys have to play well in order for the guy behind the center to play well because they got to protect them. they got to be able to establish the run game. So a lot depends on those five guys up front. So I know this uh, fall practice training camp, a lot of effort is going into those five guys and making sure they have continuity and they play together and there's chemistry. I think so too, Aaron Stam, just following him the last six years, he's the perfect guy for that group. You see him during the games and during practices. He wants to get dirty and grimy like that group. So I think it's a great fit to have him move from where he was with some of the skill positions to the interior of the offensive line. It's going to be, a, 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 I think, a really match made in heaven for them. Finally, biggest breakout candidate on the offensive side of the football. We've talked so much about Buckshot, but who do you guys see as a guy that could break out this year? I think Zach Fouts, you know, he's the projected starter. And, you know, he's got the size, he's got the speed, but he, to me, is a guy that really has to have a breakout season because he can really impact the game because he's 6'4", about 250 pounds, and he can be such a great asset to Buckshot. Yeah. 
And one, he's been here already three, four years, is B.J. Farrow. He's a guy that if you watch his tape leading up into his Liberty career, you say, wow, he's going to be the next P.D. Peterson. And he just hasn't had the opportunity, I think. He's been out there a lot, big catch against Coastal two years ago. And then, you know, Dante Shells last year got the lion's share of the publicity. So now it's kind of B.J.'s turn. He's not a flamboyant guy like P.D. was, and you don't have to be. But I think there's a lot of excitement centering around B.J. Farrow to take the neck, the baton, if you will, on the wideout position. I'll say this. He's a name we all know. But Carrington Mosley, yes. double-digit touchdowns, I'm saying, this year. At five a year ago, I think he's going to have a monster yep, season no as well. So that's it for the offense. Come back next week, and we'll chat up the defensive side of the football. Definitely be there. And don't forget us, Camp Winds Down. The 2017 season opener at Baylor is on September 2nd. The Flames once again scheduling a challenging road contest right out of the gate. Last year, the Flames took on the Hokies, and in 2014, they faced the Tar Heels. This year, they head down to the Lone Star State for their first ever meeting with Baylor. The game time is set for 7 o'clock, and it can be seen on FS2. Cannot wait. Well, Liberty has put its fair share of players into the NFL, but none have exploded onto the scene like Eric Green. A first-round draft pick, none of that would have been possible without the connection he developed within head coach Sam Rotigliano, a connection that carried the pair all the way to the Flames Hall of Fame. First and ten for Liberty now. I heard about this guy. Over the middle. He had great hands. Completes it to Eric Green. Great athlete. Green, 50-yard line. And then when I saw him, it was like, you know, Michael Jordan. Like Mike, Sam Rotigliano saw Liberty's senior tight end Eric Green as a game changer. Green is so big and has such good speed, he's hard to bring down. But Green had seen limited playing time in his first three seasons at Liberty. I got to fine tune my blocking. That's what I take from those first three years. You know, I wanted to see the ball more, but that just didn't happen. In the fall of 1989, that would all change. Under Liberty's new head coach, Sam Rotigliano, Eric Green would become a big part of the Flames' offense. Green is a threat. Sam came in there, and from day one, he explained to me how many catches I was going to have in his offense. As a player who wanted to receive the ball a lot more, that was like heaven. That was like heaven to me, so I was locked in from day one with Coach Sam. Having spent 19 seasons coaching in the NFL, Coach Sam believed Green could be a tight end in the pros. I said, you have that kind of ability. All I'm going to say is that to you now, because, you know, uh, whatever I say means a lot, but whatever you do means a lot more. My workout level went to another level. My intense training went to another level. The weight room went to another level. My studies went to another level. Everything about me went to another level. As a result of his hard work and mentoring by Coach Sam, Green finished his senior year with 62 catches, 905 receiving yards, and 10 touchdowns. And he was Liberty's first NCAA Division I AP All-American. But the highlight of Green's college career came when Liberty played Eastern Michigan. It was a timeout with 12 seconds left in the game. Robbie Justino was on the sidelines with Coach, and you know, they was on the sideline talking to him and Coach Leahy and Coach Sam. I was wondering what the conversation was about because I'm the guy all before, you know. So I, I runs over to the sideline, and I say, Coach, just get me the ball. Coach looked at the quarterback and said, get him the ball. And just before time expired, Green got the ball. He caught the game-winning touchdown pass from quarterback Robbie Justino. And Liberty beat Eastern Michigan 25-24, Liberty's first ever win over an FBS school. Eric Green would then accomplish another first for Liberty. The boy from the poor streets of Savannah, Georgia, raised in a single-parent household, was going to play in the NFL. The Pittsburgh Steelers would select him as the 21st pick overall in the 1990 NFL Draft. And Coach Sam would guide Eric throughout the process. Sam helped me choose my first agent, you know. He helped me. He guided me. That was my mentor. Still is my mentor. Green spent 10 seasons in the NFL, was AFC Rookie of the Year and a two-time Pro Bowler, scored 36 touchdowns, 
caught more than 360 passes. He also transformed the tight end position, but not like Mike, like magic. In an offense, Eric Green was used as a wide receiver, slot back, wing back, H back, and running back. And it wouldn't have been possible without Sam Rotigliano. I always liked the fact that he was smart. I always liked the fact that he came from nothing. I always liked the fact that he always gave you his A game. Together, Eric Green and Sam Rotigliano were inducted into the Liberty Sports Hall of Fame and their appreciation for one another continues to grow. To this day, I run through a wall for Coach Sam because he's only been a model of consistency and that's all a man can ask for. If a hug and a feeling of exhilaration going into the Hall of Fame together, if that doesn't get it and if that ain't what coaching's all about, then I've been doing the wrong thing for 50 years. Green and Rotigliano were a part of the 2015 Liberty Athletics Hall of Fame class. The 2017 group will officially be inducted at a ceremony on September 30th. A reminder of those that will be inducted highlighted by runner Sam Chalanga. The five-person class also includes basketball star Julius Nuosu, softball player Katie Phillips Bigham, football standout Richard Shelton, and longtime strength coach Dave Williams. Now tickets are available for this ceremony and they can be purchased at libertyflames.com. Well, turning our attention to field hockey, where the Flames had a very successful first year in the Big East, this upcoming season is once again full of expectations and belief that the Flames will advance on to the NCAA tournament. Here to chat about that is Bobby Bullock and the head coach, Nikki Parsley. Thank you, Rhett. Coach, thanks so much for taking time. I know it's a busy time of the year. Not only is the season getting started, but you're getting started for your first season as a head coach. You know, tell me how, how it's been so far. Um, honestly, it's been really good. Um, there's some things that you think are going to be really easy. It turns out they're not. There's some things that I thought were going to be more difficult that are really easy. Um, but fortunately, I have a really good staff around me and have some people that, yeah, definitely know what they're doing, that have some experience at Liberty um, uh, with Jackie Bolt and Natalie Barr. Um, between the two of them, they've been at Liberty for quite a while, so it's really awesome to have them and make the transition smoother. Now you look at your resume, I think it speaks for itself. You've played at the highest level. You've been coached by some of the best coaches. And now you have the opportunity to take this program kind of where you want it to take it. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what would you say a Nikki Parsley's program looks like? You could explain it. Yeah, um, our overarching mission for the entire program is to run the best player development program in college field hockey. So we are in the business of investing in people first. Um, and I think that if you love people well um, and you pour into them, uh, then the results in the field are gonna take care of themselves. And you look at the coaching staff, you guys are, you know, very close to their age, closer than other mm -hmm. um, sports. You know, how does that help you guys? I think it's an incredible advantage. You know, I think that right now in my career, I'm like their big sister. In a couple of years, I'll probably be like their aunt and then <laughs> their mom at some point, hopefully, Lord willing. Um, but yeah, I think it is really special because um, they're able to open up and be vulnerable in a way that I don't know that they necessarily would be 10 years down the road, but it's a special time because I feel like we have a very good pulse of where the girls are at um, and kind of where we need to go from, from where they're at, yeah. Now you look at the schedule, Coach, and you, know, you guys are playing some of the best competition in the country. Yeah. Uh, how does that benefit you and how is it going to benefit the team? Yeah, so strength of schedule is incredibly important when you start talking about RPI and qualifying for the NCAA tournament, um, should we not win the Big East, because um, that would be an automatic qualification for us to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, the goal is to have a hard enough strength of schedule um, that should you not win your conference and get an automatic berth, that it's still going to be tough enough. Um, it's going to allow us to get into that NCAA tournament. Now, following your team last year, I know there are two big holes that you guys are looking to fill with the Bar sisters gone. You know, is there anyone sticking out that you were looking? Um, yeah, so last spring was amazing. So we had some players develop, Lindsey Pratt being one of them, um, a couple of kids that we were able to develop all spring that were leading the team in goals, you know, in the spring that weren't even starters in the fall. Um, so really stepped up there. We have some internationals coming in, Monique Van Arl from the Netherlands, um, Greer Wilson's coming from Australia, was at Vermont transfer, and then um, Victoria O'Keefe, who's from New Zealand. Um, yeah, so we have some really top internationals coming in that are hopefully, hopefully going to complement everything that we've been working on, um, yeah, since January last year. All right, Coach, well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Congratulations again on the job, and we wish you the best of luck. I know we'll be following you guys. Thanks again. Guys. 
Thanks, Bobby. Well, taking a look at Flames soccer, it's not too often you have a chance at a three-peat in the Big South, and that's exactly what the Lady Flames have this season. Apparently, the conference has the same belief as well. Liberty was picked first in the BSC preseason poll. Of the 10 votes, the Flames received eight. Jennifer Noble was also named preseason player of the year. During an injury-riddled season last year, Jennifer stepped up in the Big South playoffs, scoring three goals and adding two assists. Taking a look at the men's side, Jeff Alder's group picked to finish third in the preseason poll with Tracer Mbayou selected as the preseason Big South Player of the Year. Well, coming up, one Liberty alum works off the field to make sure athletes can stay on it. And Rhett looks into the future as he names the top athletes to watch this fall athletic season. That's all when Game On returns. You have learned not just how to make a living, but also how to live. You have learned from the teachings of Jesus to live your lives by the great commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbors as yourselves. Liberty's mission is to train young people to succeed in every profession and to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. The more people tell you it's not possible, that it can't be done, the more you should be absolutely determined to prove them wrong. Treat the word impossible as nothing more than motivation. As long as you have pride in your beliefs, courage in your convictions, and faith in your God, then you will not fail. Welcome back to the show. You know, normally the stories we share with you are about Liberty alumni and their athletic accomplishments on the field. But in this case, it's about a former flame who does his best work off it, helping to keep others healthy and performing at their very best. Ah, oh, baseball. The food. The fun. For the fans. But what about for the team trainer? The life of baseball is not easy. Jimmy Downham graduated from Liberty University with his master's in 2012 and is now the trainer for the Trenton Thunder, the Yankees AA affiliate. I was in Tampa this year, middle of February and then till September. Um, and then you may go to Instructional League, which is in September, October. So, you know, you might go seven months straight where you're working basically every day. And then um, I'm married and my wife lives in Lynchburg um, right now. So I'm away from her for months at a time. What's up, Jimmy? What's up, man? What can I do for you? Can I get a stretch, man? Yeah, yeah, Jimmy. 
And for Jimmy, keeping future major leaguers healthy is a big deal. It's not easy sometimes. It's, it's a little intense, especially when you have your prospects, your big name guys, if they go down, there's, there's a lot of phone calls, a lot of questions. Um, so you have to be on your toes for sure. Um, it does get a little stressful at times. It's a busy night for Trenton's athletic trainer, Jimmy Downham, who's out of the dugout now. Jimmy is usually the first one on the scene when a player goes down. His job entails more than just diagnosing the extent of the injury. I just try to be as calm as I possibly can for them because they're upset, they're mad, because they know, you know they're gonna be down for some time, you know, losing time to get better. Um, so I just try to be that calming voice for them. Hey, we're okay, we're gonna get you through this. You know, whatever happened now, you know, tomorrow we'll start getting better. Um, so just trying to be calm as, as possible I can. The relationship between player and trainer needs to be built on trust. Matt Marsh and Jimmy have been together on several teams, so their relationship has grown. I had Jimmy in Charleston uh, for the River Dogs. One of my first full season in pro ball, so we got to spend a whole summer together there. Uh, he gives me a hard time, you know, but I, I give it right back to him. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good relationship. It, it makes it a little bit more comfortable, you know, having him and being familiar with him, and now I have him now in Trenton. So he, he takes care of me. Jimmy's, Jimmy's a good one. Matt actually, uh, I think it was in Charleston, went down with a little shoulder. It wasn't anything major, um, but I know he wanted to push through it, and I kind of had to pull the reins on him and say, hey, we got to think about your career, and it's not worth pushing through something right now. And let's take a couple days off and kind of see how you feel. Um, so it's really hard, but you have to build that trust factor. And with me and Matt, I think there's definitely that trust factor where he understands if I'm telling him, hey, we need to back off here, he, he trusts me. Jimmy's faith is a steadying influence, not just for himself, but also for his players, many of whom are struggling with the same issues he is. I'm just trying to be upbeat and helping these guys through um, because the players are going through the same thing I am with being alone. You know, their their families are somewhere else. You know, so it's just trying to be a servant to them and being, you know, a, a person that they can bounce some ideas off of, they can talk to, they can. I'm there for them, knowing that I'm there for them. Thanks to Kintos for producing that piece. Well, as we mentioned at the outset, we're on the doorstep of the fall sports season. And in this edition of Warm, Hot, and Fuego, Rhett's prepared to look into his yes. crystal ball there and tell us the three athletes who are going to have monster seasons. In essence, three athletes who are likely to see on the Warm, Hot, and Fuego list in the future. Exactly. So let's begin with Warm. Warm who are you here. looking at? We're going to go to women's field hockey. Okay. Aggie Maroney. It reminds me of Fievel, an American Tale. Yes, you know that Fievel movie? West? Yeah, not the, the first oh. one. Oh, yeah, American sorry, Tale. I the gun. You yeah. know when they bring out the big monster, the monster yes, mouse, and they're of. like, release the secret weapon! Yeah. Without the, yeah, that's how Aggie Maroney was this first year because okay. she was kind of getting acclimatized yeah. to being in the States. Yeah. And then, boom, girl can snipe. Like, yeah. girl can score. And that's a commodity that any coach wants in any league. Yeah. And look at that skill, like, on screen. Yeah. She's juggling the ball, cuts in, and just somehow gets it around wow. a bunch of trees and berries. Like, this girl can put the ball in the back of the net. And like I said, that when you're a coach and you have that commodity, you have that oh, asset sure. on your team, you're going to use it and hold on to it. And I'm sure that Coach Parsley is very excited about having her here in year two. You took a winding road with the Fievel thing, but yeah. I like where you ended Thank up. Thank you. So that was good. Yeah, all right, yeah. from warm, we go to hot. That song was stuck in my head all day. <laughs> no cats in America. Pepe Cigar out here, men's soccer. You know, a lot of people are probably like, not sure he's from Bayou. Yeah. And I'm yeah, like, I, I know. Said. I know I'm getting a little creative here. But when I watched men's soccer this past yeah. year, this guy's just always creating. Always had me excited. Yeah. A lot of fun. He had six goals this past season, three assists. I think he will break out and have larger numbers this season. He has so many targets. Yeah. Like you've gotten Bayou, you've got Mendoza as well. They're both offensively gifted. So as the chemistry builds with the three of them, I think they will get better and better. And yeah, I like that you're picking some guys a little bit under the yeah. radar as well, not right. just necessarily the people everyone knows. Yeah. And that leads now to Enfuego, your choice this year for Enfuego. Fall sports, mm. who's it going to be? Well, I'm going to go in Fuego here. I'm going to go Jennifer Noble. This mm. young lady, everybody yeah. knows her. Sure. But last year, like I said earlier, a little bit of the injury bug got onto yeah. her. And it's always hard when you've got an injury at the beginning of the year because it kind of sets you back. You have yeah. a hard time getting into the rhythm of the season. But she really just proved her, her worth in Big South Championship play. Three goals and two assists through that playoff format for her. And just the, look at this team. You've got Farrell. Noble, Abuda, yeah. all offensively gifted, and they can just be a nightmare. Absolutely. Like, they are going to be absolutely fantastic and fun to watch this season. So, I think Jennifer will have a career year in her senior campaign. An upset you didn't pick Abuda, given that she's. 
Canadian. Yeah, I, I know. I, I probably I should have, right. but... Yeah, yeah that's all right. You're yeah. unexpected. I yeah. like that. Well, hey, still to come, some major news for Liberty sponsored driver William Byron. We'll give you the details when Game On returns. online learning is a little bit different than in the classroom. The actual online portion gave me an opportunity to be able to be the husband and the, and the father and then get online and be the student in the evenings. Liberty Online has a partnership with Centra Health, the student uh, tuition deferment program that allows a student to enroll and pay their tuition out in payments or pay it one lump sum down the road. The degree that I have now that I obtained from Liberty in 2015 online is something that was a prerequisite for this role. So I don't believe I would have this role as it was a minimum to have a bachelor's degree for the role that I'm currently in. So it's helped a lot. We're all so busy in our today life. I think the online option provides an avenue to success and it provides an avenue to you know, being able to have uh, the opportunity to go back to school with its flexibility and its schedule. You might have heard some things about Liberty University, like how we're just a little Christian school in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing to do here. I mean, come on, you know us. Boring. Boring? Yeah. They say we don't work as hard, think as hard, try as hard. I object. The truth is, well, we might surprise you. Welcome back to Game On. Matt, it seems like every week this summer, William Byron is just making waves. This kid is absolutely unstoppable. Yeah, he sure is. This young man signed to deal with Hendrick Motorsports and will take over their number five car in the Monster Energy Cup Series next season. And Liberty University will continue to be a key sponsor. This is quite the feat for the young man who has only been driving stock cars for about five seasons. Byron will join a HMS lineup next year that includes Jimmy Johnson, Chase Elliott, and Alex Bowman. Yeah, incredible to be at the highest level yeah. of your sport five years in. Remember, you learn how to drive on like an inter online program. This kid is an absolute natural. Yeah, it's, so it's, fun. it's been fun to watch him grow over the past couple years. Good for him, good for Liberty as well. Well, that about does it for us. As always, hit us up on social media, mm -hmm. at GameOnLU on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. Our website as well, GameOnLU.com. All our stories there archived for you. Yeah, check it out. He's Red, I'm Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you right back here at Game On next time.